Hey everybody, my name is Marco. I'm a pro opera singer turned voice actor and a huge fan of Final Fantasy XIV. If you haven't checked out the channel, there's a bunch of awesome uh, music analysis of some of the greatest themes from Final Fantasy XIV. And today I'm thrilled because I'm joined by Luke Allen Gale, the voice of Xenos himself. Hey Luke, what's up? Hey Marco, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. Super excited to have you here. I'm really looking forward to just talking about, you know, your experience on the on the game and going through some community questions and just really just like having a super nice chat. And then at the end, we will check out the Endwalker trailer together since this is a music channel after all. I think that would be super fun. I was watching some of the cutscenes uh, just to sort of like refresh my memory because got like as, as you understand, there's so much content in this game and it's insane to me how much you know, you just chew up the scenery. And I guess I like not to launch into questions right away, but you know, what was that like for you in the booth? And were, were you given a lot of freedom to sort of really just allow yourself to go? Or did you feel like you had to sort of rein it in? Like, what was that experience like for you? Well, I, I think when, you know, when I, when I found out that, of course, they, they, they now, nowadays they give you code names for yeah. whatever project it is you're doing. And so I was auditioning for something. And of course, my agent kind of goes, but you know, it's the fantasy one, the one that's like, you know, the seventh <laughs> fantasy. And now they're on the 14th fantasy. And I was like, yeah, I know which one you're on about. <laughs> so, I mean, all, you know, confidentiality. I was like, yeah, if I just, you know what you're doing. Cause you need to know the context of these things. I think it really does yeah. help you. Of course, when I went in and did it, then you go, well, I know how rich the tapestry of all of this is. And so, um, I'm, I'm going to just lean right in on it as much as I possibly can. Um, I think growing up as a voice, as, as a, just as a gamer through my youth in the nineties and in the noughties and stuff, it always did strike me how amazing some of the voiceover artists were and how they really went for it. Things like Starcraft, when I was used to play Starcraft and Warcraft, it was always, it was brilliant little snippets, but they were great and they really went for it. And so, yeah, I think it also struck me how flat sometimes deliveries can be. And I always wondered what it must be like, you know, um, for those actors going into a booth and not knowing what's in front of them, what game they're doing, not being able to contextualize it, basically, especially people who've not grown up with it. But right. with Final Fantasy, of course, I kind of knew what world I was going into. So I was like, yeah, man, just go, go full Shakespeare on this and yeah, and make it, you know, animate it. It's, it's, it's a fantasy, like really go for it. It's great. It really is. And actually, you know, I, I, that leads me to another question just while you were talking, because I, because you think about, I mean, did you understand that you were like the big, the big, I mean, there are multiple big bads and some are not bads at all. And obviously we understand as, as actors that like no villain is truly a villain in their, in their story. But, you know, did you feel, I guess, some sort of pressure, like knowing that you've got the likes of Sephiroth and Kuja and, you know, uh, Kefka and all these folks, like, did that cross your mind at all? You know what? No, it didn't. I, I, I wasn't really aware of um, the scale of where they were intending to put sets, mm -hmm. and also where they were firing them off to. Because all I received when I finally got the role, which was the week after the audition, they were like, "Yeah, great, let's get you That's in nice. there in the booth straight away." And and they, uh, there was a, an image; it was kind of like a rough, drawn-up sketch with him in the full mask and, and the regalia, looking like. Yeah. You know, in, but in some lava pool of Mordor somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So in my head, I was like, right, just really arch this guy up and let's go for it. And and that was my initial instinct with it. And it wasn't until the director sort of really sort of started to, to fine tune me and pull some strings with me. I was like, oh, wow, this guy's got a heart inside him. And there is mm -hmm. so much more. And like what you say, you know, you kind of find the, 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 the truth in, in that character, what his... Um, what his, I don't know, he, yeah, he doesn't see himself as easy, evil. He's just after something, you know, like, yeah. You know. <clears throat> well, it's sort of interesting because I think about a character like, um, uh, I don't know, do you know opera at all? A little, yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's a, I don't know if you've heard of a Puccini's Tosca, but yeah. So Scarpia is one of these characters, and Scarpia is a terrible, terrible man in truth. Like he's, you know, just the epitome of evil in 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 a traditional sense. But also there's that three-dimensional aspect to him where, yes, like the things he does on stage to get what he wants are very vile and twisted and disgusting. But in his mind, you know, he's just going after what what he feels is right. And it, it's like fascinating, I think, to you know, to find on stage, I think, because because you're a film and TV actor and are, you're a stage actor as well, I assume. 
I train stage, yeah. Right. So you understand like the physicality of like that. So I, I wonder too, like as far as Xenos, like were you able to sort of it's weird right because he, he he's 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 thin but he's also large and then there's that armor plate so like did you feel like you really had to like get into that like you know 100%. sort of yeah yeah 100 yeah. percent. like i said to you earlier but when you see just that image you don't see that ethereal beautiful blonde hair <laughs> you know and those piercing blue blue eyes i remember the first time i saw him and my voice with it i was like are they put my voice on the right character <laughs> I'm not sure that I would have chosen that. That wouldn't have been my instinct had I, you know, had I gone with it. And fortunately, you know, the guys at Square Enix know their job better than I do, which is good. <laughs> but, um, but, but yeah, um, I, I can't yeah. quote what I was, I was going to say. But yeah, no, it's cool. It's cool. We were, we were just talking about like physicality and and. Oh, that's it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so the size of him. So you just go. You know, I, I just went on the size of him, and and felt like I had to kind of fill that space up as much as i possibly could he's this you know big stomping proud kind of character you understand you know he's definitely you can tell in the writing he has privilege going back to what you were mm -hmm. saying about like you know needing to obtain certain things by whatever means um that definitely comes with his privilege and and the fact that you know he's born into a situation where he's a prince and, and he, he and and so the world of empathy doesn't really revolve around him. He's not a member of society. He is the peak of it. So he has right. no sort of kind of social conscious, you know, he's not worried about what other people uh, think of him or, or, or how other people feel. Um, yeah. It's interesting because I don't think that's exclusive to people that are princes or that have been, you know, brought up in better circumstances than others. I think, you know, you can also be, um, what we would, I guess, deem working class in, in the UK, but, you know, but, but have been brought up or mothered almost to, 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 to be a certain mindset and think that, you know, it's okay to do and behave certain ways. It's interesting. <laughs> It is interesting, you know. You know, so, well, we will get to community questions, but we might as well just have a little chat about this too, because I think it's interesting because he doesn't really peacock. There's not a lot of like ego flair per se. I mean, perhaps based on what I've seen, you know what I mean. I don't know if if you were going for some sort of like peacocking and like, well, you know, like I, I was sort of curious about that too. Do you feel like he's very grounded in his, you know? Well, I think I think to begin with, my instinct actually was to try and peek back. I think when you look at the the garden scenes, when I listen back to that garden scene in particular with Chanel, you and the that kind of mm -hmm. bottom above him, um, he yeah, that you I can I can tell that I'm trying to peacock in that. But I think that the Matt, who was our director at, at Side UK, um, was definitely trying to pull me back from that. He was definitely trying to pull me the other way. Um, so we found the middle ground. But yeah, the instinct was there to to swan around i mean you know he's got the golf bag the katanas that <laughs> regalia that outfit who wouldn't want to just swan I know. around? You know what I, mean? <laughs> I know it's i mean i mean that's so fun and i think villains are in general are just unfortunately in my time in opera i didn't get to play too many villains but but always the the romantic lead with this beard how, how could i not you know but but it's a uh, it's it's funny it's it's fun to play those sort of characters that are very you know whether it's mischievous or devious or diabolical like there is a certain i think i think there's like a human pleasure in playing those characters yeah yeah definitely there is yeah yeah it's, it's, it's it's the drives that just trying to dig into the drives of what, you know, yeah, what, what pushes them forward, what keeps them going and, and how they survive in their world. I love yeah. It. I love it. yeah, I know. It's awesome. Well, let's dive in into some uh, just community questions and I'm sort of going to go down the row and we'll do as many as we can within the time that we're allotted. And uh, spoiler warning, if you haven't finished Endwalker, we did get a good bit of chunk here where we just talked. So you don't have to worry about that. But moving forward, we are definitely going to be talking about Endwalker. So spoiler warning um and that goes for you too luke you know just just be careful i don't want you to spoil the game for yourself i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah just kidding just kidding dave lzdr asks how does he feel about the resolution of his character and walker and also if possible have there been any good interactions with the game community so far xenos is one of my favorite and is largely due to this passionate performance keep the good work keep up the good work well thanks mate that's really lovely um I think, um, yeah, how do I feel about the resolution of his character in Endwalker? Yeah. I think it's everything the player would have wanted from their first encounter with Xenos. 
but it's everything they didn't feel kind of ready for when it finally does happen and that's definitely attributed to how brilliantly well it's kind of been sewn into the whole overall like the arc of the story by by the guys at final fantasy they did an incredible job with that but um but yeah i think like the the, the warrior of light in, in a way is kind of like on their own you know we're you're on your own single journey. You're, you're in isolation, so to speak, even though you have these other characters around you and what you, I guess, aren't prepared for until towards the end when it starts to make more sense in Endwalker is, is the fact that, yeah, you are matched by the fact that somebody is, so this character, Xenos, is actually kind of a mirror of yourself. Like if you were the warrior of light, you'd be the warrior of dark. And so, you know, right you two are kind of like always going to be bound in this sort of yin and yang which is quite cool well there and, and one of the questions does ask this whole like concept of like the joker and and sort of that batman joker duality and it does seem to me that as the as the game continues on there is that sort of like one cannot exist without the other and and so forth you know it's it's interesting to me yeah definitely 100 percent. they you know can't exist without him and when he you know i i feel that when we find Xenos to begin with he's just he's kind of at the end of his tether he's you know he's an incredibly intelligent articulate you know brilliantly minded man and it feels to me that you know his his intellect is is kind of been exhausted he he, he there's nothing really left for him and so what is left to a lot of people with you know, it kind of goes into that thing of like, you know, a lot of very highly intelligent people are often quite sad. Mm. And it's true. And, and also the difficult side of that is that, you know, there is an addiction that, that comes out of that. But Xenos sort of has the weird foresight, um, which I guess is a good thing, to actually find an addiction in, in fighting. Um, I mean, albeit harmless for us, of course, as, as players. But in, in his world, you know, he sort of feels safe inside it and that's like his drug you know that's his his hit if you will that's that's his euphoria and, and so he he exists merely for that so of course when the warrior of light arrives i you know i wonder whether if he'd have left it a few a few more years whether he'd have just i don't know done something completely reckless <laughs> uh you know i can imagine you know maybe we would have found, found him sort of i know drunk in one of the pubs somewhere <laughs> he's like you know what whatever <laughs> just yeah like... <laughs> just given up, completely given up. Um, just trying to do something else. Um, so yeah, but it's certainly interesting looking at again heavy spoiler territory here. But that the very end when he decides to go to Charlian and and uh, you know decides to assist so that he can have that final battle with the warrior of light there is i find that scene sort of was surprising to me well first of all because it's like okay well what happens now we're facing against the ultimate you know sort of evil even though it's not evil in the yeah, game no and chance there, is there? Yeah. no and then out of nowhere just bust through the like you know, the time space continuum and there he is in this primal form uh you know and it's like wow okay you know it's it's crazy because you're right like he he had to get what he wanted and if that meant his death in order to help his his foe friend it's it's fascinating you know what i mean it's such a cool twist of the way that both in his in terms of his character development but also in terms of like just the story itself it's fascinating to to go in that route it's yeah. fascinating it's so cool not the hero you wanted but yeah 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 exactly i mean yeah but the hero you needed yeah. <laughs> oh and then the other part of this question is have you had any uh, good interactions with the game community so far yeah yeah I've loads i mean it's been I mean, the, the interactions have been incredible um you know I, I joined cameo back in in june and it's just gone uh, in, insane and <laughs> the requests the right the, 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 you know the things that people have been writing and the creativity that's gone behind it you know the memes that have been created <laughs> The songs that have been sung, you know, there's so much and it's really, really fun. Um, like people are having a lot of fun with it and, and so am I. It's brilliant and, and long may it continue. I think it's a, it's a really brilliant thing. Um, and But also like roasts. My One of my favourite things recently has been trying to like work on roasting and how he would roast somebody. Somebody asked me um, the other day to roast the Warrior of Light in the build-up to that final scene in Endwalker. <laughs> 
and I was just, I just thought to myself, like, I haven't got enough time for this. You know, <laughs> not, not Luke, Luke here, his brain capacity isn't the same as as Zinas Yegalvis's. So of course, you know, it would take me like a couple of hours to go away and sort of try and sort of write something and scrap, <laughs> yeah. it, and scrap that. And, but uh, but yeah, that was that was really fun. Um, it, and that's a good acting uh, a good acting uh, practice improv uh, like <laughs> crafting a script for yourself <laughs> yeah i mean all of that has been as well like it's been a real fun challenge to, to try and get into the brain again of, of this brilliant brilliant character um, when did you finish when did you wrap like xenos like when was the last oh, do you know what's funny i was i was asked exactly a year ago whether no just before, it was actually a year and four months ago when i was around and i think that might have been for the trailer and i couldn't do it so then they asked me you know um when are you available and i think i was the last person to record so it's i mean it must have they must have been really quite scared um in the, <laughs> right up to it were like where's luke we can't get a hold of luke because he's out he's in contract with somebody else at the moment but um i think it was pretty much a year ago so we were doing yes yeah, september october that's right, yeah. Um, and then, of course, I think the game launched in, like, December. No, December, yeah. December 7th, yeah. I think. That was it, yeah. So it was straight out there. Wow, um, that's like, incredible. Yeah, that's right. But for me, it was great as well, because I got to actually see, I think for one of the first times ever, I got to see all the animations. And they were like, Luke, just match it. <laughs> just just match what's what you can see in front of you. And I, you know, a bit of me is like, God, I wish I could do this all the time. This is <laughs> nicer. Um, but then yeah. you also you get lost in what you're looking at instead yeah. of actually just concentrating on the text and you know, oh, yeah. living the life of the character. It's definitely the hard part with dubbing too, because it's like okay, I, I'm, you're you know you're listening to something and then you're waiting for the three beeps and then you're like okay, uh, you know I got, okay don't like, I have to act now I can't just like <laughs> you know yeah. I can't just like uh, yeah it's dubbing is a funny thing. Momo Vasuki asked throughout the story, Zeno's whole motivation was to fight the player going as far as to try and end the world to rile us up so that we would fight him. What decision would he himself take at the end, the final Zenos fight, or if allowed, would he have just walked away? 100% battle, like 100%. It's all he's wanted. And I think it goes back to what I was saying earlier about this sadness in his life. You know, suddenly this warrior of light arrives and, and it's it's like, bang, this spark inside of him again. And, he's, and he kind of, you know, he's got this incredible kind of complacent, nature about him still just sitting on top of this kind of rising star inside of him so building and building and building and he's plotting and planning and never allowing himself to fully be taken away with the emotion of it all so um so ultimately he's always always building up to that final battle and yeah it's, it's funny the outcome of the battle I don't know whether I, I wonder what would have happened if, if it had ended differently, you know, where we, we would be. And, and I think that it was, it's right to finish the way that it finishes. Yeah. But there's always that like, mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'd love to jump back in, but you know, um, we'll yeah. see. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. At this at this rate, with the way that things are going, it's like impossible to know what. Well, the way he next. just kept, you know, he just gets brought back from that. He's just yeah, like, <laughs> never dies. Uh, so maybe they can make that a theme in Final Fantasy. For yeah, you know, there's a lot of gaps where he's just not around. So I mean, if they end up doing some kind of like moving around in time, you know, you can just sort of turn up and have that bar fight with somebody, probably. <laughs> just leave. one more time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he walks away into the sunset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've retired. Yeah. <laughs> so T Brian two two eight seven says, looking back, I feel I like can hear Zeno's contempt for the world grow over time in his in his soul from the first time we meet him in Stormblood to Endwalker. Was this intentional? And how did you manage the slow growth of it? Uh, well, look, when I started, I didn't think I had an idea of the journey that I was about to go on with him. But as each sort of um, chapter and every time we're back in the booth kind of unfolded, it became more and more clear to me i guess through yeah through the brilliant writing um how much yeah. contempt was was growing um out of his loneliness and his need to feel um i guess his need to sort of almost like feel seen you know like <laughs> yeah. someone who, who who can understand him and even then what's i think curious about that is he needs that person to see him but 
but even even then if you're not you know as i am the most kind of like sharp you you, you sort of won't see it for what it is until you get to end walker and then you go oh i get it now i get mm -hmm. it and that's also again down to the brilliant writing so yeah i do think the contempt is definitely building um and it's that kind of classic pent-up emotions thing you know not being able to talk about your feelings and then you're sort of projecting your anger out there to yeah because you want to yeah, it's a sort of like a unique isolation i guess it's that sort of why is it always me thing like the universe mm -hmm. has it in for you but um yeah i think it's something that's yeah it's really relatable well it must be certainly interesting um to you know uh, to not necessarily know if you'll be back right because because when you get the script certainly you're not like also was the script uh was it like a movie script or was it like line by line uh, it's line by line yeah I'm right saying. okay you just you have your lines then you see like fan daniel's lines and then you know your lines and then somebody else's etc so you oh. understand the whole oh thing. oh okay it's not it's not well, the... it is a bit like a script okay cool so i mean but you don't necessarily know if you'll be back and say shadow bringers after storm blood or i mean did you were you aware that you were coming back no no so when i die well when well, i say when i die when he kind of like um well yeah when he kind of pretty much dies that was i thought that might be it for me and then yeah coming back you know um and and being this being you know sort of um it's quite difficult for me because i like I said, I haven't played the game. So going back and referring to it sometimes is a bit tricky. But I, as I understand it, I, and this was a while ago that I did the recording as well, you know, with him then kind of becoming half sort of demon or half, is it Asian? Asian, yeah. He gets possessed yeah. by it, yeah. That's, so that that transition there was was really curious. And and to me, not being overly familiar with, with Final Fantasy fourteen when I went into the booth and I chatted with, there was a producer, director, and I think another producer or somebody from the studio there, you know, they have to just explain it to you. So to me, it's this enormous gobbledygook, you know, they're talking about Asian and, and, and sort of spirits yeah. and, and, you know, like killing your dad and then doing this and doing that. And you're like, right. Yep. 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 Literally like, you kind of like, I've got to load this in as much as I possibly can. I've got no time to prepare it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then you just, and then they're like, cool and shoot it. And you just, you know, you go into the booth and you're like, I've just got to try and get this right. Um, and yeah, fortunately, again, it just goes back to the script. I think the script is so good that you, you know, any actor can, can really get Roll away from it, which I feel like I kind of did at times. Um, <laughs> and in that, in that moment, you know, I did feel quite lost with it all. I was like, I don't quite know where I am, but I just know all I need to do is I need to just sit myself in Xenos and then the rest of it will make sense they'll you know and it worked i think yeah. it was anyway. right it, it, it worked yeah. <laughs> um it worked jalbana asks uh what were your first impressions of xenos when you first got the role and how do you feel about him now well like i said earlier my first impressions were this kind of privileged um yes yeah, spawned from the the lava pools of mordor monster of a man um with this katana and was just of this grand scale and 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 yeah after after spending time in the booth with uh, with with Matt and and really kind of like trying to trying to dig to the bottom of him because you know I did the audition the audition was like 15 minutes so in that 15 minutes they're like you know we want the, the they I think they want the sound of the voice they want to know that they can get some range out of you that you can take direction and then yeah. you get out the room and then the director goes cool I want that guy and and so did the producers obviously as well so then when you come back in, you know, you've got like four, sometimes up to six hours in that in that room, but you've got no prep time. It's like you're straight in. So that director has to have done their homework for you in a weird right. way. Right. So they're the ones kind of like telling you all this stuff about like how to, you know, uh, the, the backstory of this character. And I think, you know, um, how I feel about it now is, 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 is well, it's much different to how I, I felt when I started. Um, I understand him a bit lot better, I guess, uh, and 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 I did after like the second time, second sort of sitting in there. I was like, oh yeah, 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 I can sort of feel this character. You know, that kind of like what was it? Somebody referred to to his kind of the, the, his his need for for battle, kind of almost on this sort of sexual nature. Mm. Um, 
you know that he 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 sort of yearns for this sensory thing and 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 trying to find that was quite difficult um to begin with but i think once you sort of unclick a few things with him then you know like with any character i'm sure you're you know you obviously are familiar yeah. is, is you go oh yeah no i i understand this character now like, yeah. you know, i if i met him i think i'd know how to kind of deal with him um yeah although he's a lot smarter than i am <laughs> <laughs> but also finish me. <laughs> Well, surely it's, I think too, like once you are in the booth and you have that first six hours and you're like, oh, you know, once, once that sort of dissipates, um, certainly that's what it would be like for me. I feel like the second time, once you see that script again, you say, oh, wait, wait, okay, okay, okay. You know what I mean? You sort of, yeah. yeah I know. Inevitably. I, yeah. Yeah. Cause that's it. Cause that's when you, you know, suddenly you've, you've done your homework in a very kind of like concentrated way because you've already had a couple of sessions in the booth so yeah you are sort of turning up ready it's that thing of like you know theater acting of, of you know you work and you build and you build and you build and you build the inner life this character through rehearsal as much as possible until you're ready to go out on stage and and yeah you don't get that with voiceover work um and so it does take a brilliant director like matt um to to, to really sort of tune you and 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 that's exactly what he does you you, you know i think they you've got to kind of be prepared for a bit of a rough ride as well. Like there's no egos in that room. It's, it's, it's just, you know, they are telling you that you're doing it wrong and that you're <laughs> oh, no. going, yep, cool. That. All right, sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's, Don't uh, apologize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No apologizing. It's great. But politeness is shyness is what we were always taught. <laughs> But it's it, it's fascinating to me just to to have like a brief tangent about just the differences. Like obviously, most of my life for ten years was opera based, and that was really about you know as a singer. Yes, the director is there to sort of plot the the blocking and everything, but then really it's up to the singer to well sometimes that's a whole separate discussion about like having an opinion about what the character is and who the character is and what the character is like versus I think voiceover, which I think in some ways is freeing because you're sort of absolved of like yeah you. you you just don't know I mean, you, you didn't know what xenos was like when you before you walked into the room and so in a way it's kind of this um, it's both nerve-wracking and also um absolving i think to be able to say you know what the director actually knows more about this than i do and i can trust in them rather than like oh crap wh what's my opinion on this character and is that right right in, in, yeah. from an acting perspective it's impossible you know what i mean it, so that's 100 yeah yeah it really it's, it's interesting what I did enjoy about about one of my first impressions with him as well is is yeah how Shakespearean the language is yeah um, how brilliant these these scripts are these long overarching thoughts that they, that they have you know it sort of starts with one thought and then explores the thought in loads of different patterns and then lands just as the next thought kind of starts again and so you know you've got a you kind of got to have a um, a vocal sort of dexterity with that you you know to because you know when, when we're, we're acting at least you, know, you can kind of like you can, you can play it out to the audience this way and then you can sort of move your thoughts mm. to over here or or down here for something else or whatever you can't do that when you're voice acting you know you've got to try and throw it like from here down to here or and then you know and so it's, <laughs> yeah it's, it's and it's yeah it's a fun it's a fun thing to do it's tough though when you're up against it um, which you always are because these studios cost a lot of money to hire so they're like, get in, get done, get yeah. out. <laughs> you know, take a water bottle. There you go. Be happy. <laughs> you got a 10 minute break. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, yeah no, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Japelli says, I have tons of questions I would love to ask, but just give my love to Xenos VA, Luke Allen Gale. Absolutely love his voice. And ah, thank you very much, Japelli. That's really nice. Thank you. Stephanie Laris. Let's see. Heck yeah. Way to go, Marco. You're welcome. For Luke, Xenos is 10 out of 10, my favorite character, due largely in part to your stellar voice work. Wow. One, do you have a favorite line? I'll, I'll ask these in sequential order. Do you have a favorite yeah. line? Yeah. Um, Such pleasures you seek for their own sake and no other reason. Is this not so, adventurer? I think that one really kind of just coins that sort of arc. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it, what, what it all really comes back to at the end of the day is him, right, kind of just jabbing his finger in and going, you're just like me, really, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I like that. I really like that. Two, did you get any specific direction or did you, well, you, which you did, but do you, did you have some inspiration for Xenos? Inspiration for Xenos? Um, yeah, I think, 
I, th I think really I, I kind of went with <laughs> with quite a generic sort of like um, entitled uh, posh um, mm. sort of like powerful character and, and yeah I think all the inspiration really was in that outfit um, <laughs> that we about earlier you know you, you kind of go I you know my instincts and what I was always taught as well is like don't go arch you know you don't you don't overdo it you've got to find the truth in it and so what was diff what was difficult i guess was to see that outfit and go how do i not go arch <laughs> You're right. outfit you know yeah. i want to camp him up as well <laughs> you know um so so yeah that was really the kind of the inspiration and matt delamere you know the, the director was was absolutely brilliant um so yeah, that's cool. tuned in um three have you got any favorite xenos memes Yes, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> there's a really funny one, which is, I think, again in the garden, and it's it's a shot low down at the back of uh, of Zinotier Galvis, and he's got, you know, you can see the back of his kind of trail, his black, his, sorry, his red trail, and someone's put juicy across the arse. <laughs> A bit like the juicy couture that was really popular back in the north. I was like, that's gold. Because yeah, it is a big ass, you know. It just wobbles around. Uh, and you do, you wonder, you're like, if you, I mean, surely you got a frame in there or, you know, mm -mm. the imagination goes wrong. It's a padding, you know. It's yeah. Just, it must be uncomfortable to sit, surely. Yeah, and move, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh <laughs> Maybe you should have some kind of like sitting body slam move that he did or something. Yeah, like should... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the potato nader. <laughs> Sorry, that's a cracking name. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Uh, almost as good as Marco Meatball. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just kidding. How many takes did it take to master saying a test of your reflexes? Oh. I mean, anything from one to about 20, I reckon. Uh, <laughs> because some days you're just good. And some days <laughs> you just can't find it. And, and you oh. just got that, that clicker going, no, you go again, Luke. <laughs> no, just a little bit higher, Luke. And then it's like, okay, Luke, just go for three. And we'll just record <laughs> all of them. Because then they're like, we're wasting time with the edit. Yeah. Like, record and yeah. stop. Record and stop. Yeah. They're just like, record a chunk. We'll pick one out. Um <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's, it's, it, it may have been may have been quicker. Than Rika Adamic asks maybe a silly question, but did you ever listen to the Japanese counterpart of your character? What differences did you find between the two acting performances? Yeah, uh, Kosuki Toriyumi's voiceover. I I did actually often listen to that. Um, was it for Stormblood? I think it might. Well, anyway, it was it was. I think it was like one of the second sets of, of times that I went in there. Um, and it was because they had got to a point because when they book us, they just try and book us in at some point during the creation of it. And that might be right at the start, which is great for animation, but then uh, sometimes it's not. And so I think at this point, um, uh, Kosuke had already done the voiceover and they'd already done the animation as well. So they'd synced that. So what they needed for me was to match the time. Mm -hmm. Often I would listen to him and you'd see on the screen you'd see the time bar of it as well like you've got like three seconds to say this line or something like that so i'd have to try and say that which you know can be can be quite difficult i mean it really helped me as well because it, it also means that you know i'd start i could hear in his voice the pitch or the tone i'd mm -hmm. understand if it's outside inside you know if it's an intense scene like that's right here or if it's sort of you know more, more sort of like i don't know outdoorsy and, and, and a fight sequence or something um, but it did remind me of a, um, I remember watching a comedy sketch when I was younger of, you know, how in translation often, you know, you, I can be talking like this to you and say all of these things. And actually the translation is just like a few simple words in another language, you know, so he can maybe say something really short and the English version is really massive. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, like, you're going to have to try and get this in the time slot, but <laughs> if it goes over, it goes over. And of course, we all see that. We all see that when the, the mouth stops and we keep talking, and vice versa is when the voice keeps moving, and you're like, "He's not talking. He's finished." <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we tried to get it in there. That must have been one of their production notes. They were like, "Try and sort of like make that work." Have you met? No, I oh, God, I'd love to meet him. It would be 
God, it would blow my mind, I think. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sure. Really, really cool. Yeah. Just completely <laughs> other sides of the water of, of yeah. the planet. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I feel like a, a weird bond with him, you know. I mean, he would probably right. won't know who I am, but <laughs> he's like, who? He is. And I've listened to him many times. I've co- copied his homework pretty much. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I love that. Uh, <laughs> Jay Rice asks, I would ask how he feels about the ravenous Xenos fan base. He has so many friends out there now. Uh, yeah, uh, it's pretty lively. Um, I, I will <laughs> say that. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a creative community. Um, there's a lot of imagination. Uh, healthy imagination out there, I'll say that. Nadida asks... I wonder, was there anything challenging about the performance in terms of, you know, they think about Heath Ledger as the Joker in The Dark Knight and how it took a toll on his mental health. I feel like there are certain similarities between the two characters and wonder if there was anything that challenged Luke emotionally or idealistically. Yeah, I think finding his his sort of inner drives was quite exposing, um, as I sort of touched on earlier. You know, he's a sensuous, he's kind of searching for this sensuous um, overload. Uh, you know, like an addict, he has kind of just, he's worn away all of the, you know, kind of, I guess it's probably not a very good um, comparison, but like an alcoholic, he just needs mm. more and needs more and needs more. He's got to that point where he's sort of like battled the best and it's gone and battled the best. And so, yeah, it's it's that kind of unhealthy um, drive towards his goal of, uh, of all of that. So that was quite exposing the kind of like the, the sexual power that came with that because because that's kind of what it was rooted in this this euphoric kind of thing that really i think really is a kind of almost a, um, a sort of power sexual kind of thing um mm-hmm. and it's, it's all born in power power and sex obviously being two things that go together so um so yeah that was you know trying to explore that in a, in in a studio with someone I just met for the first time, who's really, who's actually telling me like, yeah, no, go for it, you know, was uh, was quite exposing, um, but it was also incredibly liberating at the same time. Mm, um, sure. And it's brilliant fun to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> when when you finally sort of get there and you're like, is that a bit too much? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> great, we've got it. And you're like, wow, okay. Yeah. You know, suddenly you've hit the roof and you're like, so I can play anywhere in here now. This is amazing. <laughs> Was there a lot of decompressing that had to go on after the fact? Um, it, you know what? It, it's funny. I, he definitely does reverberate with you a bit. Um, and I would find myself coming out of there just a little bit like, you know, it's kind of, when you have in your imagination played around with that much power and the illusion of, you know, that power, it, it's, yeah, there's, it's, it's not a big deal. I don't think it, it, it's messed me up. At least I don't think so. <laughs> You have to watch my partner. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you do just sort of like come away a little bit sort of like, oh, wow, that was, that was pretty, that was, that was something, you know. It was like holding a gun probably. You know, you feel that sense of. That's a great way to put it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nara 070690 asks, what line read did you struggle with the most or are most proud of? I love so much of the Xenos lines and wonder which stuck with him the most. I mean, there are loads, some really, really beautiful lines. And um, I think the things that really kind of stuck with me in a very funny and odd way, um, we did the Dissidia stuff. Mm. It was kind of tricky because it's a different production house that were that were creating it. And so you turn up into the room and you don't have the same kind of support team there who are really caring for this this, this baby, basically, this incredible you know child that is for Final Fantasy XIV that they poured their hearts into. You've got guys who are kind of going, we've nicked you across from over there and we're just hoping you know what you're doing with this. <laughs> So I, it, for me, it was just, I was left to do free reign. So I had to kind of direct myself. So I had to just imagine the director was there going, no, Luke, go bigger, go smaller, go bigger. <laughs> and so, it, you know, I just sort of said to myself after a while, I was like, you just have fun with it. Just have fun with it. And one of the lines that, that stuck the most, uh, particularly with my family, because I recorded a little bit of me doing this kind of like, welcome to this ridiculous world of voiceover, um, was this is the end. And they just said to me, just do it three times. So I, you know, it's just me going, this is the end. This is the end. Just trying to give them different variations on it. And, okay. and so now that gets rep- repeated back amongst our family circle. My family, <laughs> you know, I turn up to a table at a bar somewhere and they're like, this is the end. <laughs> it's 
weird how these little things like get, get yeah that's funny yeah uh noel bahamut asks any memorable lines from voicing c card uh it was, oh, do you know it was a really refreshing change um <laughs> i think uh there's a, a line in there about being pirates um <laughs> we're, we're pirates ain't we uh it's all in there, <laughs> like that um that was yeah that was quite good that kind of sums him up as well the kind of stupidity um of him uh lovely sick heart bless him yeah i know right what well, probably a nice little palate cleanse too i'm sure <laughs> oh 100 percent. yeah yeah not as much thinking yeah <laughs> so alex ran sorry if i mispronounced which one did you enjoy acting as more xenos in human form or shinryu form which i assume even though it's like structurally the same because it's the same character there is a different heft there obviously yeah big time so they, they gave me the note on that and um and so i had to just try and like embed myself still into xenos and what was difficult was of course uh, as i've said earlier with that outfit initially when i turned up and i looked at this image of him i was already like okay go big fill that space up as much as you can then you turn up into the, the recording studio one day they hand you a bit of paper and they go we want you to go big this time and you go, <laughs> what? Uh, do you, what uh, have you, you didn't see the last ones then? I mean, this voice, you know, it, I've got one and I might just break <laughs> it. Uh, so, so yeah, it was, it was like, okay, you want me to go bigger? And I did, I remember going in being a little bit kind of angry at this idea that I had to sort of push myself further. But actually, as soon as I got into it, yeah, it was really, really good fun. And I think actually, yeah, I probably did enjoy Shinoyu just a little bit little bit more because it was just you know another level um mm -hmm. level, which was again it's it's that playing with power it's that picking the gun up thing that you just said it's picking two guns up actually like a very <laughs> oh, and bazooka yeah <laughs> exactly yeah the one you really shouldn't <laughs> hold yeah, yeah. <laughs> colin cannoli <laughs> asks is xenos evil or is he just misunderstood i think he's both i think i think he's definitely both um uh, it's difficult, you know, I guess you could say, what's your definition of evil? You mm -hmm. could ask, what's your definition of evil? Um, yeah, I think, you know, it is evil to want to sort of like chase after and eventually kill somebody and, you know, destroy I mean, yeah. them, uh, all those I mean. things. I think that's definitely <laughs> the definition of evil for me. But like I was saying earlier on this, he isn't restricted by social these kind of social rules he he's way above those things because he's a Galian prince you know he's untouchable and so for him you know he makes the rules so in his world i don't think that you know he is um he is evil at all he's just yeah and and actually the fact that he's misunderstood is what drives him forward even more or something you know? mm -hmm. there's that that mm -hmm. um lolian says asks please say a test of your reflexes <laughs> okay uh a test of your reflexes <laughs> perfect <laughs> and uh kiku cat asks what's your favorite color uh blue blue um i had a bedroom that was red uh in my teenage years Whoa. i think it just added to my angst like, yeah that's like out. not <laughs> yeah yeah just you, you my mom just let me do these things she's like yeah you want to paint the wall paint the wall if you want to go red go red it's fine i like you know it's not my bedroom um <laughs> which is why i now have blue i've gone completely the other way i think just to try and calm us even wearing blue yeah i know yeah. i'm matching your uh <laughs> i just realized yeah, that. You, well, you got my email didn't you I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 we we did it on purpose yeah <laughs> So this was fantastic. What I'd like to do is uh, I'd love to watch uh, the N Walker footfalls theme with you and uh, we'll just kind of jam out. You know, it's going to be cool to see your animation on the screen and and um, we're going to watch this together and uh, maybe we'll talk about it. Maybe we won't. And uh, yeah.
us. The fabric of the star had begun to fray, its land rent by tooth and claw. while the world is lost to ruin. It would. Come what may, we shall live on. We must. Do as you must, then. But we Scions will fight. Until the heavens fall. Until our last breath. Yeah, isn't that sick? Dude, it's amazing. What a trailer. 
they absolutely killed that. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, he first came out and just like kind of being like, "Wow, I'm I'm in that." <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, 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 I mean, it's insane. And, and honestly, like the team soak in and the, and the music team too, it's just like, yeah. it's extraordinary. And, and it's, it's a privilege to be able to like, listen to this and, and like, I mean, yeah, I can only imagine for you, like being a part of it and seeing that and like, you know, it's sick. It is always, it, it, you know, it, uh, when you, when you, from an acting point of view, you kind of, you, you set out your, you know, you, you focus on your character, your direction, your character and stuff like that. But the music is what really brings it up and brings it out and basically just kind of, you know, almost in a theatrical way, just like really pushes it into you as an audience member. And that's what that, you know, that's definitely what that does. It's funny. I, I was watching that and, and, and remembering that sort of fear almost of like, because you know they really do a great job of going like this is the end it's coming close you know <laughs> be ready kind of like you know and you know that bit inside me is going oh i don't know if i want to play this one <laughs> i don't want it to end like i want to stay in this world i don't want to know what happens at the very end um and that's you know a lot of that's down to the music as well yeah there, there's a real i mean i think well, as a gamer yourself like i know you understand this like there is this sort of like operatic thing that exists in in games where like the music you know it's like it's like larger than life it's it's the music is programmatic it, it aids in telling a story and without the, the music itself like the story sometimes can fall a little flat and it's interesting i, I think you know I'm, I'm sure for you as a stage performer too and, and and certainly being on film and tv as well it's like difficult because you know all you have is what you're able to put out and then you don't necessarily have like the like well this music is actually pretty intense which can help inform a, a delivery and things you know so it's it's interesting yeah yeah it really is it's funny when you it's rare that you get an opportunity to work the other way around i did mm -hmm. recently where it was a silent shot of something and the guy was like what do you want us to play I was oh. like, this is brilliant. so i get to just put the music on and just play the scene out silently with that you know they talk about inner life and outer life and music tends to be you know what's going on right in the heart of it all yeah so when you can listen to it on the outside as an actor, you absorb it and it comes and sits inside of you. So it goes from the outside in. It's, it's yeah. Gosh, Luke. Well, thanks so much for coming onto the you know the channel and talking about this. I mean, I, I certainly is a privilege for me, and I'm I feel you know very very fortunate that you wanted to. And and thanks. It's it's been such a pleasure to just talk about acting stuff and and everything. So really appreciate it. Mate, it's, it's the pleasure's mine. It really is. And and yeah, it, it's just been an incredible journey as well i think the whole final fantasy community are wonderful just they're absolutely brilliant and so many skilled people in it so many great artists and just it's it's wonderful to watch it flourishing the way it is long may it continue yeah and i feel like we're just like you know ramping up to even more great things it's crazy 100%. Yeah. yeah i'm so excited to see what's next yeah me too uh as always thank you so much for watching this and for watching uh you know the rest of the channel if you like this sort of stuff feel free to like subscribe and uh yeah thanks a ton and uh yeah i guess we'll both talk to you later <laughs> bye see you. see you later